crikey. If you love science and technology, you have to watch the TDD Report, hosted by Suburban Rider every weekend. Oh. Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 27th. First up, this is a new project by the Air Force in conjunction with Boeing and this is from the website boeing.com as usual all the links will be down below in the description this is a concept of a missile but rather than a missile that actually ex carries an explosive charge or kills people this missile emits a pulse of elect it's an electromagnetic pulse that destroys electronic equipment and devices rather than people they don't give you a test obviously for they don't give you a video of the test for obvious reasons but they do give you a video of a previous test of it uh, also some computer generation stuff kind of simulating what the test would have been like and then they talk to the officials about the test and how it took place they described it as being so successful that the electromagnetic pulse on the missile this is in uh, Utah test range flew over a two-story building filled with electronic devices including computers and stuff like that computers and monitors and they described this test as so successful that it even knocked out the cameras that were recording the test that's how good this electromagnetic pulse was this is something I could see possibly being developed as a short-range weapon too for our troops in places like uh, uh, Afghanistan and where they have those roadside bombs that are remotely triggered by cell, cell phones if they could have a little robotic device go up maybe a hundred feet ahead of them and shoot this electromagnetic pulse to either disable the triggering device or explode the um, you know explode the bombs where there's nobody around that's going to get hurt other than possibly the robot and uh, if it explodes a hundred foot away maybe not even the robot itself but I think this is something really good for use in the future uh, only thing I could see about it too I wanted to actually say the only thing I could say when they say no collateral damage as far as people that may be changing in the future because as more and more people are using pacemakers and different kinds of electronic implants uh, I can't really believe that if you are relying on an implant to stay alive and it's electronically powered and has batteries I think an electromagnetic pulse would probably be something that would also take out people in that one particular case and that's going to be more and more the case as medicine advances this next one is from Discovery News. This is a, a little bit of an advanced uh, updated story. If any of you have been following warp drives and development, at least the theoretical development, obviously we don't have anything like warp drives for traveling faster than the speed of light, but there's a device that um, a physicist, a Mexican physicist named Miguel Alcubierre developed the theory of in, uh, this type of warp drive. In fact, they call it the Alcubierre drive in 1994, but the only problem with the way this device works is it requires enormous amounts of energy to function. Well, a NASA scientist, and let me get his name right, Harold Sonny White of NASA's Johnson Space Center came up with a modification to this device. And if you can see, there's a picture. I'll put the picture up of the way this device looks. The original Alcubierre device had a flat ring, and White is proposing that it be a donut shaped ring and I guess according to the calculations they worked out that if they modify it in the way that White is talking about you could get the power down way lower to where it's within practical limits of power we could actually either produce or carry aboard the craft to actually produce this warp drive and because it actually warps space itself rather than physically travels through space at faster than the speed of light it still accomplishes the same thing kind of in a workaround manner rather than do it by breaking any of Einstein's calculations because it may end up being that it's impossible to travel faster than the speed of light but if you're actually modifying space itself you can still travel effectively faster than the speed of light without traveling through space faster than the speed of light well anyway if you're if you're a geek about this kind of stuff like I am you can read it, it explains it very well in this article this is from discovery.com and it's called discovery news the warp drive could become science fact I got an update from my buddy BC65925 about a spherical drive motorcycle that I've talked about in the past. Evidently there's even been more progress since the article that I found and talked about. If you look, this is called Students Designing an Omnidirectional Sphere Wheeled Electric Motorcycle. If you look down a little bit farther you'll even see they've developed a type of drive mechanism that can perch itself on top of like a 12 inch kids play ball and not only keep itself balanced but actually travel and also resist being pushed and still keep itself stable, stable too so um, 
the one thing I was worried about about the spherical design motorcycle was having a, a stable type of motorcycle and I'm thinking if this drive is as good as what it looks here if they get this perfected you could literally pull up come to a stop and then start traveling sideways without turning the motorcycle sideways in other words the the motorcycle would just move over to the side on the spheres and have no problem being stable and balancing so um, this could make for some really interesting maneuvers and interesting styles of driving. I mean, not just for a motorcycle, but if they developed this for a car also. I would say the one concern I would have here is what would it cost to replace these spheres rather than tires when they do wear out. Of course, you also have the idea that with tires lasting 50,000 miles or more and the spheres have more of a surface to wear off of, maybe they would last 100,000 miles. So maybe with the life of the vehicle, you would only need uh, just one set of spheres for the life of the vehicle or 100,000 miles whatever I'm thinking just because of the uh, you could spread the contact over a much larger area than you can with tires so anyway if you get a chance check this out and there's videos in this article too which makes it much better and finally I want to give credit I forgot last week when we did the guess that tool I forgot to give credit to one of the commenters in week before last show remember when Arizona Wacko showed his tool for truing up the um, sprocket to the chain alignment. I actually, one of my last commenters on that video is, let me get it right, NGGDSB, and he nailed it. So a few of us were guessing somewhere in the ballpark that it was some kind of alignment tool, including myself. But his reply was, this tool is a sprocket alignment tool, mainly used for chain drive motorcycles. So yes, you actually, he did hit it. One person hit it right on the nose. So give him credit for a win on that one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to, as the show comes to a close, I'm going to close off with BC65925 showing what his tool was. And I will tell you, a majority of people, not a majority, but quite a few people did end up guessing what the tool was. I knew what it was myself, too, and we had a name for it in Arkansas. This is slightly different than what he calls the tool, but it was a tool that I knew what it was used for. So anyway, as I close out, I will catch you guys next week. And here is the answer to the last tool question. Bravo Charlie 65925 here. Thought I'd join in on Suburban Rider Show Us Your Tool contest. This will be a simple one. I have a tool here that I use quite often. So there you go. And here's what it's used for. To hook that onto a log. And you can turn it and roll it. It's called a can hook. Every logger needs a can hook.